Welcome to another inspiring episode of the Elite Expert Insider Podcast. Hosts Melanie Johnson and Jen Foster are the owners of Elite Online Publishing. They're both Wall Street Journal, USA Today best-selling authors. We're really glad you're here because this podcast was designed for you. Meet industry experts that share their secrets and strategies. Get successful results for your business in money, relationships, health, and your life. Each episode is going to inspire you to take action towards reaching your greatness. Hey everyone, it is Jen Foster here with Elite Expert Insider. We are super excited today to dive into something that some people don't like to talk about because they're a little bit shy. So I'm going to ask a couple questions here. Do you ever cringe when you have to make a video or do you film it, but it takes you 12 takes and then you actually don't post it or are you perfectionist? And so you never get your video to turn out. Well, today we have an amazing woman with us, Kelsey Moore, and she is a video presence coach. And she's going to tell us a lot about how to record video as well as how to market it. So welcome, Kelsey. Thank you. Thanks so much. I appreciate that. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So tell us a little bit how you got started in video and production. Yeah, it was not a clear cut, <laughs> easy, normal, not a normal journey by any means. And I think that's pretty common with most entrepreneurs. You know, we have some crazy evolution that happens. But uh, essentially, I, I started um, my journey of self-discovery and really intentionally being aware in my life back in around 2014 when I was working in a correctional facility. And I had a really particularly contentious evening that resulted in uh, me reaching for a pair of scissors in my desk drawer as a, a client of mine came charging at me. And I, oh, wow. I, I just, I had this moment, this awakening moment, knowing full well what he was capable of. He was coming out of 25 years of prison for murder. And I was just thinking like, what am I doing here? <laughs> Why? Why is this my life? This feels really stupid. I remember so clearly thinking, this is stupid. This is just dumb. Why is this my life? I like, took this job. I chose this. And so after we de-escalated the situation and things calmed down, and I was just sitting in my office for a little bit thinking and decompressing about this. And I started to write out a list of things that used to make me happy. And as a kid, I always had that crazy dream of, oh my God, I want to act someday. But how foolish is that? You know, I was at, at the time I was living in um, when I grew up, I was living in Minnesota and then now I'm in Colorado and there's very tertiary markets. They're not, this is not LA. Like, <laughs> I'm not in the environment that fosters that. And, and it just felt so outlandish to even think that, but I started to just realize like, my God, I mean, I have this one known life. Uh, no one else can do this for me. No one else can make any changes in my life other than me. And that's, that is like the core aspect of any sort of business owner. Like you are the responsible party <laughs> for what you do and what your results are. And that was really my key turning point. And in that moment, I wrote this whole list of like travel and connection with my husband. And I wanted a dog and I wanted to act. And two weeks after that, I ended up going to a, a audition for an independent film, booked the lead role with no film training. I'd done theater growing up, but no idea what I was doing on camera. <laughs> and I was just so committed and so passionate that I gave every piece of me to these sides, to those couple of pages. And then another, another year passed and I, I finally moved myself out of corrections. And I realized this is not the job at all for me. I have to do something else. And I ended up taking a job in higher education. And during that time, my mind cleared up because I wasn't so emotionally charged constantly. And that's really when I started creating uh, the dream and the reality of being an entrepreneur and building that over the next three, four years when I, I stepped into online marketing, really learning the digital space, how to create websites, funnels, ads, understanding copy, and you know all of the the core pieces that create the business together. But I was approaching it from this place of, I want to teach personal development because that's the stuff that just saved my life. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's what pulled me out of this, this nightmare that I was living in. 
And I, during that time, during those years, I ended up being represented professionally by multiple agencies and acting and working um, as a real actor. And I was like, oh my God, this is like, (laughs) I can't even believe it. People are paying me to show up on camera. (laughs) Yeah. Your dream is coming true. Yeah. I was like, God, like there's actually, there's actually things in this life that I can control. There's a lot that I can't, but man, the stuff that I can't, I'm going to start paying attention to that. And I really, so I started to develop these skills of being able to use the power and the magic of film, I'm, the, the visual medium, the way that we can share our energy through a camera is so potent. And in today's freaking 2021, like it is imperative for business now. It is now a critical component. It's like, you know, a few years ago, if you were to just be like, oh, I don't really use email in my business. Like video is now that necessary and crucial because it is making you a real person. It is creating that, that direct connection with your audience in a way for them to build that know, like, and trust faster than anything else. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually ended up working as a guest acting coach for about six months. And during that time was when that light bulb happened. And I went, Oh my God, this is what I have to be like, this is, I don't want to be teaching actors how to act. Like I want to be an actor, but I want to teach my entrepreneurial community, this world that I'm immersed in and I love, and I'm so passionate about. I want to teach them how to show up and share their story and their message and the way it ties into their offer through the power of the lens. And that's really when being a video presence coach was just, was born and is just something I'm so excited about and passionate and grateful for and uh, just believe really deeply in. And that's how I got here. (laughs) That's awesome. And Kelsey, what's so cool about that is that you took something that was a dream of yours, made it happen, and then turned it into your business. And so now you're doing being an entrepreneur in something that you're passionate about. And that's what's so great about it. And you talked a lot about the film industry and acting and all that. And and then you realize I can teach this to my entrepreneur community. So I think that's so great that you're that you're doing that because it really is important to have that no like and trust factor. Right. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. to be showing up on camera and for people to see who you are. Now, this podcast we do in video and in audio because I love it. <laughs> some people like YouTube and want to watch the video, right? Yeah. And when we have it on our website, they can look at the video or they can listen on audio. If they're not on our website, they can go mm-hmm. to any place they're listening to podcasts. But it's really true that video really does sell and really helps you to propel it your does. business forward. It really does. And I mean, even think about um, <clears throat> what's interesting is that one of my favorite ways to consume content is I'll pull up a, a video or, or something like a video lesson or a video podcast, and I'll usually see them for just a few moments, and then I'll put it in my pocket, and I'll listen to it. We were talking about this before, and I'll, I'll listen to it on my dog walk, yeah. you know, and I'll have that 20, 30 minutes of time where I'm just absorbing, But and, and I do that with regular audio-only podcasts as well, of course, but I like it when it has a video aspect because I saw their faces. Mm -hmm. even just for a moment, because now I feel like I actually know them. It solidified a relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think about this, like back in 2019, uh, when I really did my full launch and pivot into this brand and and built it up. And I, I had been posting so many consistent videos and that's what was growing my business. I mean, I proved it to myself by doing it. And and learning and seeing how effective it was. But then I was going to a bunch of live in-person networking events. Who misses those? My God. Yeah, <laughs> I, I miss wait. those. <laughs> They're starting to come back a little bit here in Utah. Are, Are they coming uh, back in Colorado too? Yes, it's slowly, slowly. Yeah. But yes, I've slowly. started to see some postings and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't wait. But I would go in person and have people come up to me because they recognized me. Mm-hmm. They, they didn't, like, I had no idea who they were. Yeah. They came up and they knew me just because of my video content. I'm not a famous YouTuber. I'm not a, a name in a big way yet, mm-hmm. but it, it was within this community of who I was speaking to. People were like, oh my God, you're Kelsey. And I was like, yeah, I am. Hi. <laughs> right. It builds a level of credibility, authority, and celebrity that no other medium can give you. Exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. my mentor, um, I, if I look back at, you know, how I became here as a, as a publisher, and, and I do digital marketing as well. And my mentor, he, he did 
videos and that's how I got to know him. And he talked about no like and trust factor. And that's how I got started in my digital marketing experience and now being a publisher. So Amazing. Mike Koenigs is the one who taught me all of that. And it really is important, right? It's so great, Kelsey, that you become the video presence coach because so let's kind of dive into some of the techniques and tools. So the presence part of it. So what's the very first thing you should do if you're going to start to record? Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> well, what do you think the, the first thing? First. Is it lipstick or is it a tripod? You know, like which one? What do you do first? <laughs> okay. Well, we'll do we'll do an outside inside thing here. Real okay. Quick. So outside, you have to have good lighting. Yeah. That's the number one thing. We have to be able to see you. And if you, I, okay. For free, have a window facing you, you know, yes. face the window, have the, the sunlight coming in. Um, what you want to avoid is really strong yellow lights. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the normal warm light that's in our homes. So if you can just switch up some of those bulbs for daylight bulbs, um, it's going to create more of a cool tone which we actually need on camera because otherwise it can come off very orange and yeah. yellowy and be really, uh, it creates a very strange color balance and glare with the camera. Mm -hmm. The very first thing is lighting. Yeah. And the next thing is. And let's, other. let's talk about lighting for a really for a second. Sure. So do you have a light on you now for those watching the video? I do. Yes. yes and I do too. So if I turn my light off, if you're watching the video, look how you only see light on my, this side, cause I have a window over here. Yes. But if I turn my light back on now, you can kind of tell there's a window, but not as much. Right. So mm -hmm. it's oh, so cool huge important. difference. I can't reach my light. Otherwise, I would yeah. know it. no, but <laughs> it's a, such I think lighting is the is the key. And and for those who don't want to go and spend the money on a light or don't have a window that you can put a desk in front of or whatever, go outside. That's I mean, natural lighting is the best. I, uh, that's, I mean, so we want to be able to mimic natural lighting indoors. Yeah. Uh, I love filming outside. It's also really natural. Uh, you immediately get more comfortable if you're like walking, mm -hmm. if you're in motion, but mm -hmm. usually if we have privacy, if we know that somebody yeah. else can hear us, uh, that will usually impede our thoughts and we can only hold those like four to five conscious thoughts at a time. So if right. you're like holding the phone and what am I walking on and what right. am I saying? And, you know, like, and not to mention like my backyard, <laughs> I have neighbors that have lots of barking dogs. I mm -hmm. have like jets flying over. I get yeah. they're doing construction down the street so you can hear beeping. So you got to keep in mind all the sounds, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you really do. So try your best. I mean, some of it's just real life reality. Like there's so much grace for that, but try to have that awareness of what's the most quiet, private, mm -hmm. calm place, you know, but we're on a ground floor and if a dog walks by, my dog will bark. Like, yeah. you know, I can't, that's, that's just a reality, you know, yes. and then it's not going to last very long, but it's really unfortunate because I work from home and do a lot of speaking. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and you're like, I'm really sorry if that happens. <laughs> so the first thing is just really be mindful of your lighting. And then that leads into our sound quality of camera, our framing, the backdrop, what's around us, the privacy, the energy that you're able to hold in that space. But the very first and foremost thing is your lighting. People have yeah. to be able to see you. Um, know that your phone or your webcam on your computer, if you have relatively new and updated technology, that will be perfectly sufficient for your mm -hmm. camera equipment for getting started for your first few years. Like, do not worry about it. Do not go and get a mirrorless camera and a DSLR. Like, calm down. <laughs> Just use your phone. Right. And, <laughs> and most people fine. have an updated iPhone or an updated yes. Galaxy or, or Samsung or whatever kind of phone they mm -hmm. have. Um, or Google, even Google Pixel phone. So yeah. those are all really great cameras, as well as most desktop and laptop computers now. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I have a MacBook Pro. It works great. I don't know what you use, but. Yeah, I have. So my laptop's a MacBook. Uh, this right here is an all-in-one Dell, mm -hmm. and it just has the built-in pop-up webcam. That's what I'm yeah. using right now. Nice. You know, it's not the highest quality. So if I'm making my own like YouTube videos, I'll use my phone because that's a better camera. Yeah. But for interview style, like Zoom, it, this is very, very acceptable. It's yeah. really okay. Um, especially because like my content is being delivered half to you and half to you, you yes. know, so if I'm looking up at the lens, like that's really me communicating to the audience, but it's interview style. So I'm going to be looking, you know, diagonally down at the screen to meet your eye contact. Yeah. So it's like, there's, there's that built in expectation that it's not going to be like the high level delivery of, I'm just making a video on my phone direct to you, like I lens, you know, those pieces of it. 
Mm-hmm. So being mindful of, of, you know, the medium that you're using it for the purpose and the intention behind it and, and putting less stress on those things, make sure we can see you and that we can hear you. And that, that there's not insane clutter behind you because it's mm-hmm. very distracting. I mean, yes. I have a gallery wall behind me, which yeah, is which, distracting, but it's like, well, I was going to mention, I me. love your ballerina and all the paintings. Thank it's you. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. I once did an interview with a gentleman who was in his um, bedroom that was unkept and like a garbage bag hanging on the door, not like, really you know, like a grocery bag <laughs> or whatever it was, but it was like clothes everywhere. And, and now with zoom, you can throw out virtual backgrounds. Like the one mm-hmm. I have, you can see my hand disappear. I love <laughs> it. It looks so good though. Now. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, and I, you know, when Melanie's on, she's in a boardroom. Um, and I actually have a funny like story it. about that. I left one time, she left one time to go grab something and I was looking at her boardroom picture <clears throat> there's water bottles on the table. You couldn't see them in the video because she's usually sitting in front of her. You know, she's sitting in front of the, the picture of the water bottles on the table. And when she walked out and she came back, I said, where'd you get those water bottles? Those are so nice. I want to buy some of those. I was like, and then I caught myself. <laughs> those are not real. <laughs> like what? What? <laughs> what water bottles? <laughs> So great. Super funny. Thinking though, I just had to come up with the water bottles. Like when the technology is there for us to be able to reach into the Zoom room and pick it up, then I'm going to be super impressed. (laughs) I'm just going to be like, (laughs) I cannot wait for that. (laughs) Yeah, that would be awesome. But uh, okay, so the last thing to really pay attention to with outside, and then this one transfers into the inside as like really the first few key things that we need to pay attention to when we're getting on video is that when you have lighting, when you have a camera, that's going to dilute about 20% of you. And so that is your, your skin color, like your tones. And that's where you might need to put on a little bit of makeup or a little bit of extra or something, or even just like pinch your cheeks a little bit, you know, get, like, get a little bit of color in there. And, you know, that's, that's kind of the intention behind like putting on some eye makeup or some lip color, because that's how we communicate is through our eyes and our mouths. So those things being highlighted and outlined just kind of add to the delivery of that. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't like people getting hung up on, you know, I have to get full hair and makeup ready anytime that I'm on camera, unless that is specifically your brand. I I think that's unnecessary. It's a deterrent and it actually could hurt your brand because it come off as really uh, disingenuous if it's not something that's actually aligned with who you are. Right. And that kind of goes into the authenticity of video. Yes. So, you know, and like you said, unless it's like your brand and you're teaching tutorials or something, or you mm-hmm. have a specific way that, that, that you look, you really want to be authentic. So showing up on Facebook Live or showing up where you don't have like full on makeup or you were at the beach and some of it is coming off, like it's okay. It's so okay. I mean, it's very relatable. I mean, especially like I work with men and women, but a lot of my female clients, you know, they're coaches of some sort and they're coaching other women. And like you, (laughs) most other women are like, oh, cool. I look like that most days, (laughs) like a little bit, the messy bun and whatever. Like that's, that's usually going to create more of that relationship. So it depends Mm -hmm. on who you're speaking to, what you're speaking about, what your brand reputation and style and persona is. And you know, like mine is uh, like um, a polished, but in a really casual way that fits the medium of which I'm speaking, you know? So it's like, yeah. there's going to be that, that variation and that balance in it. But uh, really the thing that creates the true through line and the authenticity is the second thing. And that's the inside. And that's that the lens as much as it takes away that like 20% or so of our coloring, it also takes away about 20% or so of our energy because we have layers to move through. So the lens, I mean, think about any film or TV show you've ever watched that's made you laugh, that's made you cry, that's made you feel like you just saved the world, that you felt really connected or seen or represented or heard. I mean, that's part of why media representation is so important because we build that connection in a story, in a display. And so think about that actor when they're showing up in a way that's muted or lazy or just like smaller, you know, Mm -hmm. and you're like, man, that was, 
that's not good. <laughs> yeah. I kind of relate it to the, the ballet, the dancing, like I, in, in high school, I danced and they would talk about how doing it full out, right? Yes. You can go through the motions and you like know the steps, but you're mm-hmm. not doing it full out unless you're really going through the motions and doing the steps, right? Perfect. Exactly. Dang I grew up full out. line and all those things. Yeah. I, would, I don't know if they have that in Utah. They don't have it in Colorado, but um, <laughs> So I well, we did it in drill team kick line. Yeah, no, no, okay. I, know what you're talking about. <laughs> I was like, actually, a lot of people don't understand the reference when I say that. <laughs> yeah. It. Well, the Rockettes. Exactly. Yeah. exactly, though. And that's such a true analogy for it. And so when you are on camera and you're not practicing, like you're actually live or recording with your people, you have to go full out. Yes. You need to, I mean, Yes, be real with yourself and your personality and how it is that you communicate. But Mm -hmm. the truth is, a lot of people teach this. Okay, just pretend that, you know, you're sitting there with a best friend at lunch. Two things. One, I don't know how you talk to your best friend. (laughs) Chances are you don't show up as the business owner authority when you're just chatting with your best friend. Maybe you do. (laughs) But two, I'm not actually sitting across the table from you. We have a couple of layers to move through. So it is my responsibility to be able to show up and push my energy, my essence of who I actually am, my personality, my, you know, all of the things that if you're in my space in real life, you could feel my job is to push that through the camera lens. Yes. And those would be the top key things that I would say you have to start with. And okay. Ooh, if I can, if I can roll on that thread for just another yeah. moment. Um, I just had on my coffee and I'm feeling all the energy. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Is is one of the things that really holds us back from the physicality of being seen and the uh, inner reality of showing up with our true energy and essence, right? Those two things of being seen, being visible. That's like the big wall of fear that comes up around that is usually shrouded by some insecurity that we have Mm -hmm. uh, about ourselves, about how we look, about fear around what people are gonna say about what we're saying. Uh, if they think we're going to embarrass ourselves, if we're going to sound stupid, if, you know, all of these, these mind chatter things yeah. come up. And <clears throat> so I was mentioning um, before the call that I'm dealing with a, a new TMJ, a facial appliance. So something for my, my facial joint. And so I have this new retainer in my mouth that gives me a little bit of a lisp. And I was wondering, I was like, I don't know if I'll mention it today, but <laughs> actually I do. I want to talk about it because I'm reliving again, working through a new insecurity, something that as a speaker and on video a lot to have a brand new speech impediment that's, you know, it's getting lesser and it's, my mouth is adapting and all of the things, but I, I mean, I have, I need to show up, you know, like that's my job. That is part of my career responsibility is to show up. So I don't get to it, unless I'm unable to, you know, just to hide and be like, oh, I don't like how, I don't know, my, my voice sounds in this moment or something. So therefore I'm not going to show up and serve and sell. Then I don't have a business. Mm-hmm. So we have to move from that place of my insecurity is what matters most into my audience that's waiting to hear my message. And the thing that I can do to transform their lives is what matters most. Yes. Mm-hmm. I love that because you really do kind of just have to overcome those things and realize that being authentic and being real is what people want. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I mean, it's even, and there's an absolute difference of being sloppy, like the gentleman with his, his bedroom situation yeah. and then being real. And there's been countless studies done. It's so fascinating. If anybody wants to go down this rabbit hole of research, like I love this stuff of, you know, of, of cultural social studies. And uh, there's, there's this one great example. I need to look up and find like the name of it or something, but they were rating um, how people felt about their presenters and their speakers. And the people who showed up really sloppy and messy and fumbly were like, oh no, <laughs> like people didn't trust them. They didn't have good feedback for that. They looked like they were a disaster. And then you had the people that came up that were hyper polished, like uber professional. And it was like stiff, but perfect, you know, and it was just kind of like a little robot and people are like, oh no, oh, you know, ter- no connection, no human connection. So then they had the person that came up there that like looked good, but felt like they were looking like them on, on their best day, right? Like we want to look like us on our, on our good day. 
And they showed up with that really professional sense of that authority and that certainty and conviction, but like spilled something or laughed and snorted or like, you know, dropped something. And people loved that because it felt real. It felt trustworthy. And because it was so human and they got to see it as something that made them, you know, giggle or be like, okay, like, look, they're not flawless. Like they're a real person, but they had enough of that, that, that container around them that held them as the authority in the way that they showed up. And that's a key thing that I really teach when I say video presence, like the energetic presence that we show up with where you are holding that container for yourself and your audience. I love that. Well, these are some really great points. I'm really excited to get more information from you. I know I was saying earlier that Melanie and I need more videos on our website. So we might be, you know, hiring you to coach us a little bit on how to get some of that other stuff done (laughs) on our site. But tell us, uh, Kelsey, where people can go to find you and where they can learn more about your services and getting the video presence coach. Oh, thank you so much. I would love that. And I'll need your help because I'm going to write a book ne- probably next year. <laughs> so, uh, I'm My website is my name. So it's KelseyMoore.com. It's spelled a little funny. It's K-E-L-L-S-I-E. Moore is regular M-O-O-R-E. Uh, same thing with Instagram. It's Kelsey underscore Moore. And then I do have a free class that I'm offering right now. And I'll give you the, the link for that. Um, but we're actually going to work on making your first video during that class to really just work together to move through that fear, get that first one done and start building in some of those habits. I love that. Thank you so much for the offer. And we will put that link in the show notes as well as on the video description on YouTube. So people can check that out. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. Great. Well, everyone, please remember to subscribe and to like, and we'd love to hear your comments. So leave a comment. If you liked what Kelsey was saying today, message us or leave a comment on YouTube or on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. And remember, we're also on TuneIn, so you can ask Alexa to play it as well. And we'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Hey, are you looking to increase your revenue, build credibility and elevate your brand? This podcast is brought to you by Elite Online Publishing an innovative publishing and full spectrum marketing company. They will publish and market your book to make it a number one bestseller. Becoming an author is the best way to market your business. So contact them at eliteonlinepublishing.com today. All of their authors become number one bestsellers.